Hello my lovelies, today a VR to the wonderful Lisa Pepez. 21 tarot questions and 21 plus decks, here we go. Question number one, what is the deck they'll have to pry out of your cold, dead hands? So if my hands were going cold and a tunnel of light was surrounding me, Hmm. This is the deck that I would want to accompany me. I would want to cross over in the company of wise crones, crone energy that has whispered to me over the, the years I've worked with this deck. These strong, weaving women who are wise and have seen vessels fill and empty on repeat. They know the ghosts on the moors. They know paths through the unknown. These are holders of stories, stories that would help you cross into the unknown. I think to be passing over or to be at the point where you, your hands are becoming cold, these crones are the people I would want holding my hand. And also, with that being said, not only the weavers oracle I would want to accompany me. That is Shadow of Doubt, this deck. My first ever Rider Waite deck bought from my local metaphysical shop, which I only use now to talk to my dad because my dad's voice came through this deck loud and clear and surprised the bejeebas out of me to be honest I was not expecting it I don't call myself a medium at all it was it was something that I kept trying to write off as my imagination up until the point I just couldn't do it anymore and I would want my dad to come and get me look for the kind people in your family line it would be my dad and his mum coming to hold my hand too so the weavers that crone energy the kind people in my ancestral line which is this deck I'm sure that I would be clutching both of these decks but there's one more i've got three for this i'm not going to do this every prompt i promise guys the stretch tarot this a deck that through using and through experience i know is full of magic and it is one of my most precious decks in my collection it came with me to Margaret's house. Margaret's voice lives in this deck. Other people's stories, the magic of connection. This is definitely the magic deck for me that you would have to come at me with a crowbar to get it out of my cold, dead hands. So that's the stretch tarot, the weaver's oracle and this very personal version of the Rider Waite. Question number two, what is your guilty pleasure deck? Well, this isn't really so much a deck as just other things that I use for divination. They are cards, but sometimes I wonder if I spoke about the practices I have with things like Pokemon cards and pulling these to get messages, whether people would think I was being disrespectful to divination practices or to tarot or to oracle. I do sometimes wonder if they could see an altar with Pokemon cards pulled on the regular, what they would think. <laughs> so it is a little bit of a guilty pleasure and it's not only Pokemon, oh no, 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 in this bag here. I will often do a delve into this bag and pull a top trumps card or I'll pull an LOL dolls card for a message. If you've been on my channel for half a second you will know that this is right up my street. 
so they're, they're like toys and games that the kids have collected over time i do keep the cards this is this is really tilly's deck but i do sometimes when i feel the urge go and grab an lol card out of the bag these pokemon cards used to be busby's now they now live on my altar as you do now the the most spectacularly impactful one of these type of decks if you can call it a deck from my guilty pleasure category is from a game that i got in a charity shop for like 50 pence the game wasn't very good we got rid of the game but this box of cards came with it and i have got an ongoing spell practice divination practice going on with this box and it is probably as magical as the stretch tarot in fact it is mind-blowing what has come out oh no these these are cards i've already pulled i can't get these out of order um oh my gosh <laughs> these have been unbelievable yeah let's not get these out of order but you can see the game itself is just um somebody whose turn it is stares at the picture and then you roll a dice and you have to ask them a, pi a question about the picture if they get it right they win the card um so those are that's the game which like kids with vr machines and xboxes wouldn't want to play this but for 50p i ended up with this incredible deck of cards which it is just fantastic for what I'm using it for. Decks that aren't really decks. Decks that are other things. That's my guilty right, pleasure. Question number three. What is the deck that I wish existed? Oh my goodness me. I honestly, I wish that a Barbie doll deck existed. Like a Barbie through history. I would absolutely love that. I would love it. I mean, I know, I think I've seen something like a Barbie doll deck before. Very, very expensive, out of my price bracket on Etsy. And I don't even know as that's like a proper licensed one. It might even have been like using the images without permission. But I think if Mattel put out a properly licensed Barbie tarot deck, oh my gosh guys i would be so all over that so i want a barbie deck mattel please team up with somebody you can photograph the dolls in my collection i'll give you full access please a barbie tarot right just please question number four what deck would i give a new reader well i think i would give them like a little mishmash of decks i would First of all, I'd ask them what they loved, like sort of art-wise or hobby-wise. If there was a deck that fitted that, I would give them that. But I would also give them this one, which you've just seen me get out. So let's get it out again. I would give them a classic Rider Waite deck. Um, but more importantly, along with the deck, I would give them a specific book, a book that I just found so, so useful. I would give them Liz Dean's The Ultimate Guide to the Tarot. When I was first learning, this deck was incredible. I mean, I wasn't really drawn to ever wanting to work with an actual Rider Waite deck, but I wanted to see the images really clearly. And look, that's what you've got in this book. You've got the Rider Waite imagery in here. So although I didn't start with an actual Rider Waite deck, I did have all the images to study from because of this book and like all the associations, all the uprights and reverse meanings, just um, just a really fantastic, fantastic book when you're brand new to the tarot. So I would definitely do a combination of a Rider Waite with this book. Um, with a deck that they also loved and then to give them a contrast you can see i've thought this through can't you <laughs> to give them a contrast between a deck that really uses this system but to co contrast like the sort of olden days imagery with more modern imagery 
I would also give them a light sears and I would say look compare the two see it set in a modern age now to really get that meaning stuck in your mind um, so they would might end up with a nice book and three decks one to match a hobby of theirs or artwork they love one to show them the original and one to show it set in a modern day setting and I think that would set somebody up really really well I, I wouldn't give them Marseille or Thoth because that's not where I started you automatically go with what you know best don't you that's why I'd go for the ride away but yeah I think that would set somebody up beautifully question number five what deck do you want to get along with but it just never clicked this beauty the david fontana the wisdom seekers tarot i'm giggling because this was the first deck that i ever came across when i was quite new that steered away from the meanings of the cards or the ways of interpreting the cards that i was getting like secure in <laughs> when i when i met these illustrated pips you're gonna have to excuse the boy racers driving past when i met these and also there is a swapping of the elements as well oh i was so confused so 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 confused um and i just put it away and i tried to get it out again about another year on and was still confused and just didn't get it a little bit triggered by the condescending hmm which one shall i pick um look on this guy's face so that didn't help very nearly got rid of the deck because of his face but i just love the colors look so i wasn't into pips i didn't understand how things were being different i was too new i think to take this on just couldn't get it um and it's just been put away but it's a yet on this i haven't i haven't got to grips with it yet because i am now getting more and more into pips my knowledge is pretty secure and my understanding that different systems can work in different ways all of that is now very secure a few years on from my starting point and now this is beginning to interest me again so i think i've learned over my tarot journey not to give up on a deck just because you think they're not for you which doesn't help if you're trying to get rid of decks I know but I have found that it rolls around it will come around this is getting louder in the cupboard and it's time is coming I can feel it so the wisdom seekers tarot it hasn't clicked yet okay question number six what deck do you only keep for the art to be honest none of my decks they all have a place like even the pokemon decks they're all used and they all have a place probably one in in a little mini collection within my collection is this one now this one if you know the story of this was actually my very first deck which then got cut up because i didn't know what it was and then when i got back into tarot later on in life a very faint memory of this deck resurfaced in my mind and i went on a hunt for it all i could remember was it was a a book joined to the box and i could remember the artwork like the sort of disco the disco angels and i couldn't get this deck off my mind and i found it on ebay and at the minute i saw it i couldn't remember what it was called or anything the minute i saw it i absolutely knew that um this was the deck that all those years previously i'd been gifted and had chopped up in my artwork this is the deck although i have i do use it not a lot because i don't tend to work with angels but i do use i have used this and I do love using this deck i'm putting it in this category because this is the deck that if i want a little delight hit with the art in the deck this is the deck that i get out i just find it a complete and utter delight i mean it's a complete oddball as well 
I mean, some of the cards are a lot stranger than others. But it's just got this incredible 70s disco vibe, I call these decks. So even if I decided tomorrow that I never, ever, ever wanted to touch this deck again to work with, I, don't, I wouldn't get rid of it. I would keep it for these astonishing images. So I think this is the closest I've got to what deck do you just keep for the artwork because this is just, this is a complete joy. Okay, question number seven. What deck did you buy because everybody else did? Well, I don't think I tend to do that, you know. I, I don't buy decks just because I see other people buying them. I mean, a lot of the time the reason for that is budget and not having it. Uh, so I think we're going to have to go back to my Ride Away journey with the with the original Ride Away. I did see a lot of people saying online, you know, you really do need the original deck. You need a Thoth, you need a Marseille, you need a Ride Away. If you're serious about tarot, you need some of those decks. And there is a huge part of me that does agree with that in, in some way. I think you need to feel these decks in your hands and, and at least at some point to have worked with them what i found with getting the decks in my hand it was very different to just having the images in the books but when i bought this of course my dad's voice came through it and then i didn't want to touch it for anything else apart from talking to my dad so i then de decided shock horror i needed another ride awake deck and i'm not one that does copies or backup copies of decks. I found this one online. This, I bought another amazing deck for £8 on eBay and the seller threw this in as part of the deal. And this is the Radiant uh, Ride Away. I think this one has been trimmed. It came to me, I think, trimmed and edged. I mean, it might, it might actually not have any borders on. I'm not sure. I'm not a massive follower of Ride Away decks. But I did buy this second copy, I think, because of the prompts from other tarot readers saying, yeah, you do really need to have had some experience of working with the originals. And I saw a lot of people owning a lot of different variants of the Rider Waite. There we go. Look, right, Radiant Rider Waite Tarot. So, uh, yeah, it definitely was one that I got because of that, because I saw other people working with it. I felt I needed to have experience working with it. To be honest, this ha deck hasn't really gelled with me, this version. Um, I loved it when I first got it. I absolutely loved it. But over time, my lovers drifted back to this one, which is a lot more muted and smudgy in its printing. This one was definitely bought because I saw other people working with the original and I felt like I needed to as well. Okay we are up to question eight. What deck is over your head or just baffles you? Okay I'm going to go to different systems for this. Now this is another deck that again is one of these books joined to the box. I bought it honestly because I wanted to collect the series of decks that come in this old-fashioned format i just loved them like i said this is a collection of decks within a collection but this is titania's fortune cards this is a lenormand and um i don't know how to read with them i've never done any study i have never ever read a word about how to do this i've never watched a video um literally i bought this deck because i was collecting decks in this format i'm sure at some point i will become interested well i am in i am already interested I, I would love to know how to use this system and how to read with it um and i don't for a second think that i'm not capable of learning but i've got a deck ready look it was only i, I think i paid between two and four pounds for all of these decks in in boxes i think they're a bit more expensive these days but when i was looking for them they weren't just whenever i saw one come up on ebay i got it so you know very very cheap and just 
delightful so any Lenormand deck this is the only one I've got like I said and in a similar vein a system that I've only just started learning this year is Marseille never wanted to but like pips and Marseille it's all in it's just intriguing me so this is Fournier's Spanish tarot which I think is probably one of the cheapest mass market Marseille decks that you can own but honestly it's literally one of my favorites I went when I was looking at getting a Marseille knowing that at some point I would want to study I looked at them all and uh, this is the one I loved like the cheapest one which is lovely how lovely is that that the one that you love the most is the cheapest it doesn't happen very often does it and it's still over my head i don't think it doesn't really baffle me i just haven't learned it yet um so i'm going with different systems as the answer to this one and two really fabulous fabulous decks fournier fournier's the spanish tarot and titania's fortune cards Question number nine, what deck surprised you? Two immediately jumped out into my mind for the answer for this one. First of all, um, Kiro Machetti's Grand Tarot Grand Lux, which was a gift from my dear friend Nancy over at Paper Moon Tarot. Now, Nancy sent me this deck to give it a go and to just see. And to be honest, Machetti decks and the art style never really appealed that much i find them honestly a little bit spooky i think it's just the clarity of this sort of computer generated collage sometimes i find it i don't know why i find it spooky but i do but i'd heard so many people say so many wonderful things about these decks i just thought well let's just give it a go and um, nancy popped it in a lovely box for me and it arrived and after a while i decided to get it down and give it a go why did it surprise me you may ask it is another deck where a voice came through that i absolutely wasn't was not expecting and it was my maternal grandmother came through oh my gosh through this card through this card and to clarify that it was her and I could hear her as clear as day. I said, okay, give me a card that sums up our relationship. Now, my maternal grandmother was fierce and ferocious and scary, but I think out of all of her grandkids, me and her had the closest bond. And I would sit in her dilapidated little house in the middle of town. And she had like just a coal fire in her front room no lights ever on it was always really dark in there and she would make tapers to light the fire out of plaited newspaper so she would tear newspaper strips and plait them to make tapers to light her coal fire and whenever i went to visit i would sit with her in this dark little back room and plait the newspaper for her for tapers and when i asked the question who are you who are you speaking give me clarification give me a story in a card of something we did together and i was thinking she needs to find a card with a plat in it somewhere to convince me bear in mind this was the first reading i'd ever done with this deck i hadn't even seen the cards i didn't even know if there was a card in the deck with a plat in it somewhere and out came this Oh my gosh. And then the reading that she then proceeded to give to me was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Uh, jaw dropping, like chin on the floor. I can't believe this is happening. At the end of the reading, I said, could you give me a card that will be a sign that you're there? what do I need to look for like out in the real world to know that you're speaking if I hear you again what sign do I look for and she gave me where is it where is it where is it where is it let me see if I can find it she gave me this card a deer so a deer or a tree I didn't know at the time 
So I left the reading about a week later. I was in the woods, the woods that I walked for 30 plus years and never seen a deer and her voice came through again. And I said out loud in the middle of the woods, if this message really is you and this voice is you, show me the sign then. And out from behind a tree walked a deer. I've never seen a deer in that woods ever before. In fact, it wasn't one deer, it was two deers. And the weird thing is they walked along the path next to me and the dogs didn't react, the dogs didn't see, the dogs didn't run after them, the dogs didn't lift their heads. It was like, it was like they weren't there for the dogs. It was the most astounding moment ever. So I think we can pretty much say that, yeah, this deck kind of surprised the bejeebus out of me. Yeah, so Tarot Grand Lux, and I keep this one for my nan. Um, so my ancestry line that passed, claiming all my decks, guys, I need my decks for me. Get out of my deck cupboard. <laughs> but it is lovely having, um, having decks that will surprise you like that, which is incredible. And the other deck that surprised me, we're going back to my Rider Waite story, this one of course my dad's voice came through that was a surprise this one was bought then to get a ride away i could actually use and thought mm, still not sure about working with it and then another wonderful friend gifted me this yellow box ride away and i thought okay third ride away i've only got these three ride away only only three ride away it's such a lot um and I tried for a month, I had a month where I just decided I would use the classic decks and really say like I've given them a good go. Um, oh, it was like, I thought it was going to be such a grind. Let's give them a good go. And this one, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about it. It might be the colours. It might be that it feels like there's more room to breathe using this deck. It feels lighter. It feels more like bigger skies in it somehow. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I loved working with this and I started pairing it. I started pairing it with Chris Ann's Curious Creatures and that pairing was sublime. Um, and I got to the end of that month and I thought, okay, I'm a con convert. I love working with the Rider Waite now. I love it. So this deck also surprised me. It got me from a person that just studied with the Rider Waite to a person that would reach for the Rider Waite to actually work with and do readings with. Oh, and I love it. I love it so much. So two decks that surprised me there. Question number 10 is what deck doesn't really work for you, but you keep it as a collectible? Well, all of my decks work for me, to be honest. I mean, you're talking to a woman that what that can pull a tarot reading or a reading from a Pokemon deck. So they all work for me. I can make them all work. Um, but let's go back to this collection of kind of this style of decks, of, of decks with books joined to the box that just grabbed my fancy you've seen these two already um and like i said at the time they were so cheap i mean i think i paid four pounds for julia parker's dream cards i bought titania's star tarot i think i paid i think i paid three pounds for this one i know i only paid like four pounds for that one so these like were dirt cheap i think the whole collection was like about 12 15 pounds all of these decks put together so this one is titania's star tarot um of course it will work for me if i decided to get it down and, and use it it's a tarot deck but it wasn't really bought with that in in mind it really was that all of these decks kind of got bought with the idea of of making a little collection of them and my my collector oh talk box rage my collector's gene really did kick in with these um which is is lovely because they were cheap <laughs> um this heart and soul angel cards is very much again like the harmony angel cards it's like sort of similar artwork these are some of the backs there's still some in the box 
you can see like very sort of 70s disco angel vibe again it's like heaven meets saturday night fever and it just delights my soul it just completely delights my soul i mean look at these they're just some of them are just oh they're so fantastic they're quirky and they're kind of unusual and they're fabulous a lot of them i think look like perfume bottles i know i've shown these before i mean look at that my dad used to have a walking stick like that so that is just so gorgeous look that one looks like a perfume bottle i think but these i i love and they are decks that i do keep because of of the fact that i just started a tiny little mini collection oh the old top boxes are a nightmare so i have the heart and soul angel cards i have titania's star tarot which i've never used dream cards which has images like this in which i do have a video about which i have used and it was it's been fabulous a lenormand which i've never used and an harmony angel cards which i also have a video about which i have used which i love so if you are interested i will link these two videos down in the description box question number 11 what deck is your favorite gilded deck absolutely hands down is the botanica but you can see even even the guidebook has got this beautiful gilding on the box is just divine it's got a pull out drawer here and you can see it's gilded on the edges and it's just got these gorgeous backs now normally normally this quite sort of, it's it's not soft gilding it is quite sharp and normally i'm not for that at all but against this artwork it there's something about it it's just is so lovely i think because it's such a dark background with these flowers to have them this gilding on the back there's just something so deliciously aesthetically luscious and appealing about that and i love it and, and i do love this deck i love working with this deck this will come out definitely as the flowers start to appear more this is going to be out and worked with this year quite a lot um because it's a firm favorite and i love working with it so that is my favorite gilded deck question number 12 which deck do you love but hate the card stock no brainer radley valentine's angel tarot card look what a chunky monkey this is because the card stock is is quite thick and it's kind of really glossy and it is it is sticky every time i go to use it it puts me off using it and i don't have many decks that do that but look at these angels i love the images so much so you've got angels you've got dragons you've got fae you've got mermaids you've got dolphins you've got unicorns in here like it's everything that i absolutely love i mean i love the colored borders i love the messages and the text on the card i know that's a massive deal breaker for so many people but i love all of that like i love that it's all got multicolored borders i love the text and these images i mean look at that the fantastical creatures in this deck and like the fae look reading in the middle of this beautiful scenery it's it's breathtaking and i think it's discounted and lost because of the cardstock i mean if, if they made this deck with the text say more integrated or taken off altogether and the borders smaller and these images bigger on say a linen cardstock or just a smooth cardstock how stunning would it be hey house are you listening hey house come on come on now it would be incredible so this deck is going nowhere i mean i'm looking at it now and i'm thinking oh i'm so blown away by it cardstock oh and the fairy deck is equally as stunning it's absolutely gorgeous but the cardstock 
oh look at it it's wonderful so i love this deck so much but the card stock guys the card stock right question number 13 what deck gives you the willies now i know this is supposed to mean like scares you a little bit but can i take it actually literally because i have this deck which is still sealed now this has been stored in my bag of shame yes it is one of the decks that i bought was it not not 2022 2021 when i was supposed to be doing a depth year this was one of the extra decks i bought for my christmas present in that depth year that i then decided to open no new decks in my depth year so this got put in the bag of shame vowing i wouldn't open a single deck that i shouldn't have bought in that depth year until I'd completed a full no buy year, which was last year. So I did no buy year last year. So this has been sitting in my bag of shame. And why is this the deck that gives me willies? <laughs> gives me the willies? Because there are a lot of willies in here. Um, and that's why I bought it. And that sounds odd, much odder <laughs> than I was expecting it to sound. That didn't sound at all odd in my head. Sorry guys but i bought this deck specifically to work with a shadow around the masculine i am the mother of a beautiful beautiful boy who is growing up rapidly into a gorgeous beautiful man i do not want to hold any barriers against the male of the human species or the masculine because I have a beautiful boy that just doesn't feel right at all so i bought this deck to try and get over that it is not open yet because i haven't felt ready so why is that barrier there without giving you the horrific life history sometimes the fairy tale gets really messed about with by people with ill intent and in my life that has been a series of of men that have like oh let's just not go there we all know what i'm saying and sometimes it gets difficult if you've escaped um a very toxic situation then um it's difficult it's difficult to find your trust and your faith again what what am i doing i'm literally unboxing this as i speak oh my gosh as if this tag isn't going to be long enough as it is first of all i'm rebuilding self-trust self-trust that i now know what a boundary is hey that would have been useful to have learned earlier wouldn't it um self-trust to trust myself that i know what a boundary is first and then um which has taken a while <laughs> years um now i know what a boundary is how about some trust in in the nice men out there again because they are out there i know i birthed one so and immediately we're there <laughs> oh, so this deck gives you the willies literally bought for the willies oh guys nudity alert sorry i should have said that earlier yeah see so absolutely oh look there's different lovers cards absolutely bought for me to rebuild my relationship and trust level with the male of our species and to understand that the male just doesn't represent pain or fear or punishment like the male can represent a whole gamut of different things so this deck it literally was bought to give me the willies <laughs> again that just sounded better in my head but you know what i mean you know what i mean a great card to end on and in that same vein the neck oh vein i'm so sorry i should not have used that word <laughs> okay in the same ballpark no 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 in the same area of work let's just go with that area of work what is your favorite deck for shadow work well considering that is my biggest shadow like 
recovering from those experiences and regaining trust in in most of the population the Mary L Tarot now this I don't come to this very often because it does take me to places that I find incredibly confronting so this is the second edition and again in a, in a similar way I'm being very careful with my word choice here it does um it does confront me and it brings up those issues because this deck again it there's there's nudity nudity alert there's male nudity in this and there is a awful lot of masculine energy in in this deck you know at that end of the energy spectrum if i was to place this deck where on an energy spectrum does it feel like it's very much at the masculine end so for that because that's probably some of my biggest shadows are around that and about trust and self-trust boundary work and, and like overcoming some of those events of the past this very much a deck for shadow work for me question 15 is what deck do you love in theory but not in practice that's this one the journey to enlightenment tarot it is by selena joy love it it's mass market i don't see it talked about very much on youtube but in theory it is full of pattern and color and busyness and line work and sort of lots of surface features of art that in theory I love you know I love mandala art so in theory I bought this deck thinking it would really tie in to a lot of the things in art that I adore in practice when I use it and pull a spread with it which I do and I have tried it makes me sometimes feel a little bit sort of car sick because there is just so much going on i think i need to find a way to work with this deck with say a single card pull because to pull a spread with these it gets too much it's so patterned and it's so detailed uh, and i'm not dissing the artwork because i think i mean look at that two of wands like set against the pattern it's spectacular the artwork so it is a real feat of of creativity this deck i love it i wish i saw it more and um, it makes me more determined to find a way to work with this deck that does work but at the minute just um look at that queen of pentacles it's stunning um at the minute this deck in practice isn't working for just the general way that i pull a spread or talk to a deck the artwork is just like i said it, it's too it's too busy so i'm going to try and find a way or a pairing that this deck will will find a way to work with that six of wands is stunning but just really busy to use and i'm lost i'm completely lost in this artwork again oh, it is lovely but yeah you know you can see what i mean can't you question number 16 is what deck would you never use to read for somebody else well i don't think to be honest i would ever use my tarot avatar to read for somebody else because there is already a conversation happening when I use this deck. So I wouldn't want to put like a, a third party, another person in the mix. And the conversation that's already happening, apart from like the conversation that we have naturally with our cards when we read with them, but it's the voice of Frida in there. This feels more like a personal conversation between me and Frida. And it would feel like almost like an imposition to invite somebody else into that conversation does that make sense 
it, it does for me anyway um and i hadn't actually thought about that until i read this question and i looked at all my decks my initial reaction was well i'd use any of my decks for somebody else it wouldn't it wouldn't you know make any difference and then my eyes landed on this one and i thought no i wouldn't use that one um and it made me think yeah it's because me and frida that's the conversation that is had when this deck comes out to play so the tarot avatar i would don't think i would ever use this to read for somebody else and then the next question is what deck would you um never read for yourself with well i haven't got a deck in my collection like that i use all of my decks and my dolls, my game cards, all of those are I would use to read for me. So there isn't a deck I wouldn't use for me. Question number 18, what deck could you not bring yourself to buy? There are a few creators that have stepped, I think, outside of integrity in the tarot marketplace that I couldn't bring myself to buy from like creators that have been mean to reviewers and just creators that put things out online that I thought that I disagree with from an ethical um, point of view like they, they don't they're not in line with my integrity line so I think that would stop my, me from buying one of their decks okay question number 19 what is your favorite pit deck the first one it's got octopus is on it's got a sea theme and it's very pippish and uh, it was it was mass market i'm not sure whether you can still get it when i got it it was under 10 pounds it was absolutely dirt cheap under 10 pounds so the majors they all have this viewpoint almost like you're in the card itself Look, the lovers, you're actually right there, actually in the scene. Where are the other majors? Look, the sun, look, you find an oasis in the desert. And they all have plants as well. Look, there's lemons and sunflowers in the, in the sun card. You can see the pips are incredibly pippish but the guidebook for this is absolutely fantastic it, it talks a lot about personal responsibility look here's another major card look the chariot and you can see there's the plants again in there the justice so there's no people you're right there in the scene and there's the plant as well oh, i love the judgment card look at that and again the plants all the meanings of the plants are referenced in the guidebook as well um, it's been fantastic. It's really been fabulous to work with. And then another pip deck is this one, the Lord of the Rings, which I know I've spoken about. I sp spoke about this in my March Happies. Look, instead of a guidebook, you've got kind of this fold-out booklet, which is wonderful. But look how chunky monkey those those pips are. Look, you've got the rings and the cups. Look, they're really like goblets. Oops. So you've got these lovely pips that I wondered whether I would get on with them. But I really do. I, I love it. And I, you can see it's kind of like a nice balance between the illustrated... And then see the pip comes in like that. So it's wonderful. I love this deck. I love the cardstock. Mass market and um, lovely. Loved it. Loved working with it. It's my second month of working with it regularly. I'm loving it. It's so much fun. Yep, so that's another favourite pip deck. Question number 21 now, what deck slaps you with the truth? Okay, we're going for a deck pairing. This is a bitch slap from hell, these two. So we have got the unlikely bedfellows of the Thoth, along with 
Isha Learner and Mark Learner's Inner Child Cards, a fairy tale tarot. I know that you wouldn't necessarily put these two together, but let me show you this pairing. Unexpected bedfellows, for sure, but absolutely wonderful. And a combination incredibly keen to slap me with the truth. When I first paired these together, the voice of the Thoth kicked up a massive stink. I've spoken about this before. However, within one reading, I could almost see the Thoth side-eyeing the inner child cards going, damn girl, you giving some serious slap in there. And that was it. They were firm friends and it was me that had to watch out. And that's how it goes with these two. It's been like this ever since. To the point where sometimes it's just truly hysterical. I just sit there and think, you two, do, can you just calm it a little bit, please? Because that's outrageous. So we have one of those <laughs> friendships now. It is, it is quite a pairing. If you've got these two decks, you're thinking, nah, surely not. I challenge you. Give it a go and see what happens. Um, and if you do, oh my gosh, please come back and let me know. Is it just my decks that just here in this space do it? Or is this just a combination that will grab you by the pigtails and swing you around the playground? Come back and let me know. And last of all, the last question, question 22. What's the deck that got away? Oh, for me, this is, um, it's the Tapestry Tarot, which is weird, sort of quilted, applique, dolls, sort of doll characters. And uh, it's been out of print a long time and it never comes up anywhere. And it came up on eBay here in the UK, but it was the French version. And even the French version, it was like 40 pounds. Uh, but I wanted it so badly and I couldn't believe it had come up. But it's got big keywords all around the edge. And I just thought, oh, but it's the French version. I wonder if I should wait and see if the English version comes up. So I waited and I've never, ever, ever seen it anywhere since. And I constantly kick myself for not having just jumped on that deck in any language possible so that is my unicorn deck the tapestry tarot oh, I just think oh, I think it looks so fabulous so anyway guys that is it that is my 22 tarot questions I'll link all of Lisa's links down below thanks guys so much for watching and listening and I'll see you next time bye